Hey, sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush, and today we're going to make our own chalk paint and clay paint using paints that we get from the hardware store. This is a Sherwin-Williams, but I believe this is, you know, Sherwin-Williams now sells a part of their line at Lowe's. This one I paid a dollar for, and it's sort of a cream color. And this one I got directly at Sherwin-Williams, and I think they charge like six dollars for these. That's a lot of paint for six bucks. Now, I did this, made my own paint, uh, chalky style paint, for several years before I started using uh, Dixie Belle and DIY, which I love, and it's so much easier for me uh, to just grab those and go, go to painting and not uh, be mixing up ahead of time. But I have some of these that need to be used up. Sometimes I want to do a really big project and sometimes I, I want a color that's not available or, or whatever. Sometimes I just want to play. So that's what we're going to do. Our ingredients are going to be plaster of Paris, which the main thing in here is calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate is chalk. So uh, you can buy the now brand calcium carbonate. If you just want calcium carbonate, you're wanting to go for something better, but this is like four bucks at Walmart and it goes a long way. What I'm going to do in the clay based paint as well as this is a uh, white clay, French white clay, and it just happened to be one that I had. This one's, uh, you would get it at your local health food store. You make masks and things like that out of it, unless you're me and you make paint out of it. So uh, basically we're just gonna be adding these ingredients to our paint. With this one, it's small. This is 7.75 ounces, so right at eight ounces, which is a cup and we're going to make this one be the chalk paint. So all we're going to add to this one is the plaster of Paris. I've already started a little and got it ready. And this is a two ounce portion cup. That's the kind that salad dressing comes in at restaurants. You can get it at maybe on Amazon, but you can get it at webstrontstore.com or save one and wash it from a restaurant if you want. So this is two ounces and I'm gonna try to get the two ounces in here. I'm gonna go with one ounce first and stir it in real good. The chalk style paints are known for being thick for being, uh, this is already very thick. It was already thick when I got it because this is old. I've had it probably four or five years. I don't even know when I got it or where where I got it. Pretty sure I remember getting it at Lowe's. Let's see, it's already thicker than it was. Let's put a little bit more. So this wasn't quite eight ounces, but for eight ounces of paint, I would start with adding an ounce and then going from there based on the thickness that you like your paint. You can always add just, uh, you know, when these are acrylic, acrylic latex, whatever, uh, based paints, you can always add a little bit of water if you need to, just a drop or two to thin it back out because it will continue to thicken. So say I use part of this today and I don't use it again for six months. Well, I may need to add a few drops of water then, but you, that is becoming a great, great consistency for chalky style paint. And looks like we're only gonna use mm, barely a little over an ounce, not even an ounce and a half of our measure in here. And that's gonna be a good portion. Had this paint been thinner when I started, like most of the paints uh, usually are, we would have used the whole two ounces. But you, you judge when to stop based on how thick you want your paint. I would still, with this, so once this is in here, then 
most surfaces you shouldn't have to prime or anything because th now the plaster of Paris is going to help this have more tooth and stick to most anything that that you want to paint so if it's really slick like glass or a top that has shellac on it or something like that you may would want to rough that up or use a primer but in most instances in most furniture you just clean it real good with Dixie Belle white lightning or TSP or whatever it is that you clean your furniture with and hopped paint. Afterward, this will dry to more of a matte finish that normally this paint would have probably, I didn't look at it, but it would probably have uh, had like a satin finish a little bit. But because we added the calcium carbonate that's in the plaster of Paris, it's gonna dry a little more, uh, a little more matte. And so you want, because of the acrylic, that's in this paint to begin with, you very likely won't have to put a top coat on it. It's still gonna be okay, but you would get extra protection by putting a top coat on it, a poly or a water-based poly of some sort, or you can use any of the waxes from any of the brands, the dark waxes and things like that to give it that depth that chalk paint gets from waxes and also to darken around the crevices and things like that. Honestly, I, I believe that's plenty. So I'm going to stop on that one and that one's ready. And I normally would then write something on the top so that if I'm leaving it in its original container so that I know that it has uh, plaster of Paris already in it. Our other one, this is an eight ounce container. So I'm, I am slightly paying attention to what I'm doing here. And this paint's a lot thinner. I tried to stir it up real good this morning, but it's been sitting in there for probably eight or nine years. Isn't that gorgeous? I was gonna paint some chairs that color at one time. So let's pour some in here. This is an eight ounce container. So I just poured right at eight ounces in there. So we have a cup of this. And we're gonna want this one to be chalk and clay. I still have, let me put a little bit more in here. That's about an ounce. So I'm gonna get about an ounce in here of the plaster of Paris. This really, really doesn't change the color of your paint very much. I mean, it could make it a, a tad lighter, but it's not enough that most people would notice. This paint was thinner to begin with. This is not, I mean, this is from Sherwin Williams and, and you know, I love them for wall paints and things like that. And this is the paint that I used for years and years and I still love them and I still use it if I'm doing walls and, you know, big things like that the majority of the time. I, I wouldn't go buy any other brand at the store, I'll tell you that. But um, I might would use like Dixie Belle or one of the chalk paints that I sell, but for wall paint and that kind of stuff. I'm always going to use this, but this is not their top of the line paint. This is where you buy a sample to go home and do a portion of a wall to make sure that you like the color. And I'm sure that they're, you know, selling that right at their cost, but this is an acrylic latex based paint as well. And it is a lot thinner than their, you know, than their wall paint or that kind of thing. We use the the cheapest of their wall paints. The contractor grade is called a 400. We use the 400 a lot. And I don't even believe this is quite equivalent to the 400. But like on our rental properties and things like that, that's what you normally use. But for your home walls, you would want a better paint, which we do use their top of the line for that. Okay, now we're gonna put the same amount of clay in there. Even though this has, will have, we're going to start with an ounce, will have clay in it now. That doesn't make this necessarily a clay-based paint. It's still going to be an acrylic-based paint that has um, 
clay in it and chalk in it and other minerals in it. There's other minerals in this besides just the calcium carbonate. But it will give it those properties that make it go on thick and rich and have a really good coverage and stick to most anything. And, but then again, because we didn't just use, you know, straight pigments and water, we're using a base of an a, acrylic latex paint, it's still gonna have those properties. So you won't have to top coat it, but you can. You're gonna get more of a matte finish adding the clay in it than you would with just the plaster of Paris. same thing you definitely I definitely would because it will have a you know more of a matte finish I definitely would put um, a top coat on it to protect it a little bit better but it would be fantastic for distressing and things like that too I think I'm gonna add one more ounce of the clay because I want this one to be pretty thick So now we're at eight ounces of paint, two ounces of clay, and one ounce of plaster of Paris or calcium carbonate. I have a little whisk that I normally use for this, but I didn't have it in with my supplies today. So it's taken a little longer than usual, but it is very fun to do. <laughs> This is what gives it that little bit of extra stick to itiveness that the clay and chalky based paints are famous for. It's getting a little thicker, but still not as thick as I want. I'm gonna go one more time with one more calcium, uh, one more plaster of Paris. So now we're eight ounces of paint, two ounces of plaster of Paris, and two ounces of clay. and we'll thin it out with water. If you open it next time and it's too thick, you can just add a few drops of water and thin it right back up. Yep, this is great. This is gonna be exactly what we're looking for. I like the clay one to be pretty thick because you can get texture with it. This is the ones where you would use your palette knife or, um, what do you call it when you have a bigger one, like a trowel or whatever on there, putty knife, to lay some of this color across there and scrape some back off. It really gives you abilities to do creative things that the regular paint don't give you. If you wanted it to be thicker than we're doing now, this is as much as I'm gonna put in here today. But if you wanted it thicker than that, you would leave the lid of, off of this overnight and some of the water that's in here would uh, evaporate and make it thicker. Or you could just, what I usually do is pour some out on a paper plate for overnight, kind of just lightly cover it with foil to where the air can still get to it, but it's not you know, gonna skin over or anything. Can you see how much thicker that is now? That's gonna be perfect. I'll show you on this canvas. This is where I made some homemade gesso earlier, colored gesso. This is the 
a paint pixie number eight, I believe. It may be. Maybe a six, I'm not sure. Let's see how much paint goes on there and stays on there. That's a pretty good bit. Can you see the texture that it still leaves? You could do that with your palette knife. Now that'll, as I said, that'll dry matte. Make sure not on top of your container, you know, clay and chalk based. Let's try this one real quick. What kind of brush do we have out here? Here's a, just an angle brush. I got this one on, on sale on Blick Art Supply. This one's thicker, but are still very thick, but also very creamy with just the can you see how good a coverage you get from that? I mean, we're not seeing any of the yellow color through there. It's awesome coverage. This is would be great for doing small projects like signs or little boards and things like that. Love these chalky style paints for um, canvas painting too, not just for furniture painting or wood painting. Would be really good for a jewelry box though. of tug and pull to it. So there you go. That's how you make your own chalky style and clay based paint. I definitely believe it's much easier just to this will dry in about 20 minutes to touch but it'll need about a month to cure. Um, I still believe it's easier just to buy a Dixie Belle or a DIY, DIY already tinted, colored, and made. But this is a lot of fun, and you can do it for a little bit cheaper. Not a lot, but a little bit. And be able to make your own colors, and that always feels good, too. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye. Bye.